Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Today, we are going to be exploring the dangers, and if there are any, of 5G. Now, if you've heard of 5G, you've probably heard a lot of conspiracy theories about it. It's very dangerous. It's uh, going to be controlling us. It is extremely uh, unhealthy, etc., etc. Is it true or not true? We're going to be having an expert that's going to be talking about it, and... She's also an expert in the coronavirus and diseases like this. So uh, if you have any questions, we invite you, especially if you're worried about this, to call into the show and get your worries confirmed or make you feel better. I honestly uh, don't know exactly where she is. I have the feeling that she's going to say that these things are bad for us, and I would tend to agree. Uh, I've always been worried about microwaves and uh, radiation, x-rays, things like that, and perhaps my own concerns will be confirmed as well. But we invite you to call into the show if you have any comments or questions about 5G and the coronavirus. Do we really need masks? Do we really need to be under lockdown? How contagious is it? How dangerous is it? And is there a connection between 5G and the coronavirus? And what about microwaving and zapping our food? How safe is that? And what is the government's, what are the government's guidelines? What do they say about it? I remember my mother was telling me that when she was pregnant back in the 19. Uh, 60s, I believe, or maybe it was before that, they were x-raying pregnant women. They didn't do ultrasounds then. They did x-rays. It would be unimaginable today because of what we know. So we're going to be learning a lot on the show today, and I'm very excited to have our guest on to be able to answer our questions. And uh, I want to encourage you all to uh, go to our site and support the station. If you like what we do, there's a donate button there. And I want to say also hello to the people who are listening from all over the world. We have listeners from all over the United States, Canada, Israel, New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, Shalom there, Australia, Cyprus, the United Kingdom, Indonesia, Chile in South America. Wow, from all over the world. It's great to see you. We'll be right back, everybody. Join me in the chat room, and uh, I'll see you there. Always challenging the status quo. Hello, I'm Rod Bryant on Beyond the Matrix here at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. I want to encourage you to listen each week, every Wednesday at the same time, for an amazing show that will challenge you, inform you, and inspire. News, views, and wisdom for the nations here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Don't forget, Beyond the Matrix every week, Wednesday, here on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. The real dangers of 5G. Also, what about the coronavirus? Is there a connection? How dangerous is the coronavirus? Do we need to really be under lockdown? If so, how much? Do we really need to wear masks? And one of the biggest questions, will this virus ever go away? We're also going to be talking about electromagnetic fields, cell phone Wi-Fi, cell phone radiation, Uh, microwaves, are they safe? And uh, all of these things that are on our minds, we are live if you're listening between 7 to 8 a.m. holy time right here in the land of Israel. Or if it's between midnight to 1 a.m. U.S. Eastern time, that means that we are live and you can call into the show with any comments or questions. And our guest today is Dr. Devra Davis. She's an American epidemiologist. Demiologist. Oh, I don't. I, I know I didn't say that right. She's a toxicologist and she's a writer. She works on disease prevention and environmental 
environmental health factors. She's authored the books The Secret History of the War on Cancer and the book Disconnect, The Truth about cell phone radiation. She served as, a, as a President Clinton's appointee to the Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board, and today she is the founder and president of Environmental Health Trust at ehtrust.org. She's here to talk with us about 5G. Is it safe? Is the government secretly installing 5G in our neighborhoods? And what exactly is 5G and should we be concerned? I can tell you all right now that during the lockdown, when people were hunkered uh, down in their homes, there were rumors going around my own neighborhood right here in Israel of people saying, uh, they're installing 5G. And actually, there were workers on our street installing something. They were changing the street lights to LED lights. But some people were saying they're changing it also to 5G. They're putting in 5G. That's why we're under lockdown. All these conspiracy theories going around. Maybe true, maybe not true. I don't know. But we're going to be asking all of these questions, what our guest thinks. And let me welcome to the show Dr. Deborah Davis. Thank you so much. Delighted to be with you. Okay. And I mean, there's so many conspiracy theories going around because we're under tremendous stress in the world today. I mean, it, whether you look at uh, pictures of what's going on in Lebanon after the huge explosion there, people with masks. You're looking at the United States, people with masks. You're looking at Hong Kong, Israel. It doesn't matter where you go on the globe. We're all under this uh, pressure of the coronavirus. And at the same time, technology is rolling forward. And uh, people are worried. People have all of this information that's going around that may be true, may not be true. So saying that, where would you like to start? Well, first of all, it's, it is very important for everyone to wear a mask, to try to keep get this virus under control, to follow the advice of, of your public health ministry that was given uh, by Dr. Sigal Sadetsky more than a month ago, and that is being given by all of the serious public health authorities around the world, wearing a mask, washing your hands with soap, by the way, um, is going to be very effective against COVID. There is no reason to think that uh, 5G causes COVID because quite frankly, you don't have 5G in most places. What we do know is that wireless radiation prior to 5G, 3G and 4G has been shown in various studies to affect the immune system. Uh, that fact um, is indisputable. That does not mean, therefore, that 5G causes COVID. There is no evidence that it does. I want to be clear about that. What we do know, though, is that um, COVID can be reduced by wearing of masks. And there are some suggestions from China uh, and publications in the peer-reviewed literature that you can find on our website at ehtrust.org that vitamin C may be prophylactic, that is to say, may prevent COVID. And there have been reported cases of successful treatment of people who are seriously ill with COVID with intravenous vitamin C. And all of that information can be found on our website because we report in a peer-reviewed publication in the journal Global Advances in Medicine and Health, uh, the first author of whom is, is Richard Cheng, MD, PhD, uh, and I'm the last author, and Mikhail Kogan, uh, who is the director of the Center for Integrative Medicine at George Washington University, is the second author, and I'm the last author. And that piece, which was published, I think, about a month ago, reports on an anecdote that I think is very powerful, and I'll take a minute, if I may, and tell you about it. Please. There was a, there was a family in China, a rather prosperous family, that lived separate from one another of adults. One of them, the elder uh, woman, became quite sick. The other adults all took care of her. This is be when COVID was just starting to develop. Nobody wore a mask. She became very sick with COVID. They all began to use rather high doses of vitamin C. There were five of them. When I say high doses, I mean a dose of vitamin C sufficient to cause um, bowel um, disruption, loosening of bowel. Okay, so this is a dose 
It varies from individual to individual from say one gram up to 10 grams. They all took vitamin C. When she was hospitalized and put on a ventilator, they insisted that she be given intravenous vitamin C. At that time, this was in Wuhan, 80% of the people who went into intensive care and on a ventilator, as she did, died, 80%. This is early on in Wuhan. She survived and not a single member of that family developed COVID. Now that doesn't prove anything because the level of proof we require in epidemiology is randomized controlled trials under controlled conditions. We do not have that here. But I suggest we have a very powerful anecdote. And further, we report in the same article by Richard Cheng and others that there are 50 consecutive cases of people who were treated with intravenous vitamin C who were in, of, on ventilators in intensive care. And these cases all survived. So I can tell you that in China, where I have been a visiting professor at Sichuan University, vitamin C is being used uh, extensively by health professionals, as well as by those who are in a position to know about the story that I've just told you. How, how do and, people get their hands yeah. on this vitamin C? You, if you need such large doses, I understand it's very difficult to obtain that. Well, actually, no, you can get it. If you go to a store to buy pickling uh, product, there's ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. Uh, they don't call it vitamin C. They call it uh, ascorbic acid or some other thing. It's used for making pickles. And you can get it in a bulk of, you know, of a pound or two, and it's food grade, and it's a powder. And frankly, you can sprinkle it in children's drinks like lemonade. That's what it tastes like. If you add a little stevia or even honey, then you've made it in, into a, a, an lemonade drink. It's not that hard uh, to find other sources. The pill form may be more difficult. I don't know whether it mm -hmm. is or not. And frankly, I'm not telling you that everybody's going to find this benefit. But I think it's worth noting that this is a relatively inexpensive remedy and that it has been reported now in a peer-reviewed publication by Dr. Cheng and colleagues. And, and what's the average dosage that a person should be taking in order to try to ward off the coronavirus? That, that's the, the average dose will vary with the person because everybody's different. And so the way you figure out the dose is you take as much as you can without getting an upset stomach because it mm -hmm. will upset your stomach and you want to be careful because obviously you don't want to, and you don't want to take so much that there are certain people with a tendency toward kidney stones. So there are individual factors that make a difference here. And I would tell anyone listening to please consult your physician uh, to determine what, what would make sense for you. But I can say that most of my family members are doing this now um, because we want, all of us want to stay safe, but it's really important for people to use masks. They have been shown to reduce the transmission. And that's going to be key until we have effective treatments. And we do not yet have a universally agreed upon effective treatment. And until we have a vaccine, which may be a year or two off, it's really important to continue to use masks and to understand that we're not going to go back to business as usual for quite a while. We're going to be more mindful I, I, we are already seeing in the Southern Hemisphere less transmission of flu than in past years, because if we do the things that we're doing for COVID, hand washing and masks, we're also going to reduce the transmission of any infectious agent, including, of course, flu. Mm -hmm. how, how long is this for a long time that we're not going to go back to normal? What do you what do you predict? Until we have a vaccine that's universally agreed upon to be effective, and I think that most of my colleagues think that's that we're maybe six months to a, at least a year off, uh, I think that we're going to have to continue to be quite um, careful. But even after that, while we may not need to be wearing masks, we will need to be much more mindful of the transmission of infectious diseases and the critical importance of hand washing. Mm -hmm. I mean, this this really will save lives. There's no question about it. 
All right. Okay. So we're going to stop here because we have to take a break. Uh, but when we get back, we'll open up the phones. If anybody has any questions, they can call in. And we're going to keep talking about this subject and talking about 5G as well. Uh, these are all things that concern us. We're going to ask, why Why do um, these um, radiation, microwaves, whatever these... Um, um, things are, why do they affect our immune system? How do they affect it and what we can maybe do? We'll be right back, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Hello, everybody. Making a difference often takes just one moment and one person at a time. I am Orly Benny Davis, your show host on Israel News Talk Radios from Jerusalem with love. You'll be hearing people talking about politics, religion, social issues, and making a better tomorrow. Join me, Orly Benny Davis, for God and Country. From Jerusalem with love. Wednesdays on Israel News Talk Radio. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Did you know this psalm and many others were composed by a Jewish shepherd and musician who later became a king? Would you like to know some of the inner meanings of psalms to help you connect with God and strengthen your soul? An exciting and easy to read book is now available, which will help you do just that. Software for the Soul, Psalms for Everyone, available on Kindle, Audible, and Amazon.com. Software for the Soul. Modesty at the beach? It isn't just about body image. It's about feeling good. Modest swimsuits so we don't get burned by the sun. So we won't get ogled by strangers. So we'll feel free to express ourselves without the need to expose ourselves. Let Marcy Modest help you to cover up what you want, how you want. Made in Israel. Visit MarcyModest.com. That's M-A-R-S-E-A Modest.com. And get a 10% discount on your first purchase. Two new shows on Israel News Talk Radio. The return of the Jewish people to the land of Israel was prophesied in the Bible thousands of years ago and is coming true today. Shalom. Join me, Josh Wander, on Israel Unplugged. Listen in as we delve into the spiritual and physical aspects of the Jewish return to Zion. We'll discuss the biblically mandated, historic, and of course practical understandings of this incredible transition from exile to redemption. That's Israel Unplugged, every Monday on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom, I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. We're going to see a surge again, and I fear for, for my country and for others when that happens. Right. But I, I, I have to tell to- you, though, I'm just a bit worried about the uh, any vaccine that they're going to find. I, I was always taught never or to try to always avoid taking any type of drug or vaccine that hasn't been on the market for 20 years so we can see what any any yeah. birth defects or, or any other side effects that could happen. Just to take it so soon, I, it worries me a lot. But we only have another two minutes till the end of the segment. I want to ask you now about, because we've already covered the coronavirus, what we should all be doing in order to protect ourselves and our neighbors as well. Uh, you, you talked about just doing the patriotic thing. Unfortunately, being a patriot of your country today is extremely extremely unpopular. <laughs> and uh, that, that's very sad. But in any case, um, 5G, there are a lot of people, and let's go back to conspiracy theory. We had William who called in from the UK. He's one of those people who's honestly worried. Um, and, yeah. and conspiracy theorists have their place too. They're asking questions and that's legitimate. Um, if they're secretly putting 5G up, if it's really dangerous or not, I'd like to uh, ask where you stand on that. We have like a, a minute and a half till we go to break. Go ahead. We have to understand something. 5G signals will be different from 2G, 3G, and 4G in several key ways, which you can find information about on our website. 5G will transmit power in narrow, high-power beams. Okay, so these beam exposures will interact with people, animals, and trees. And so it's different. But I can tell you 
there is no 5G yet fully functioning in any big way, except in a few cities, in a, not in Israel, in a few places. Now, what we know is that 3G and 4G, which have been tested in experimental studies with animals and have been evaluated in epidemiologic studies with humans, can increase cancer risk, damage DNA, uh, and damage other organs, and in, in children has been shown to have an effect on their memory. Those are publications which you can find summarized on our website at ehtrust.org. And what we, what we are concerned about in the United States is that 5G has not been tested adequately, and therefore we are part of a group that is suing the Federal Communications Commission to require them to show us what consideration they have made of the scientific evidence before they move ahead with 5G and before they move ahead to tell us, which they believe it or not did just a few months ago, that the 24 year old standards for testing phones are still valid. Now, I think that this is, to use a phrase, bovamances. The idea that you could take a standard developed in the 20th century and apply it to a 21st century technology that did not even exist when these tests were developed is nonsense. And that's what we're facing right now. All right. So we're going to be going to a break right now. When we get back, we'll talk more about testing. Are things safe for us today? 5G, what it is, what we have to worry about and be careful about. Feel free to call in and we'll be right back. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. This is Shai Bentico, and each week I'll be webcasting to you from Judea, origin of the word Jew, a people besieged and beleaguered in every generation. Nazi Germany is but a memory, but in its place the world invented the phantom Palestinians as this generation's internationally authorized Jew killers. Tune in for a different slant on life in Israel. Phantom Nation, every Monday. Hi, I'm Rabbi David Aaron. The soul basics are the most profound, the most essential, and yet often the most neglected in our education. Join me for Soul Talk on Israel's News Talk Radio and discover the secrets to love, spiritual growth, and personal power. How did a nice Jewish girl from Delaware end up living in Israel? Shalom! I'm Natalie Sapinski. Join me on my show, Returning Home. Meet different people who have moved to Israel. Hear their personal stories, their highs, their lows, and everything in between. Each week, we talk to experts on immigration and the process of moving to Israel. Listen to Returning Home every Thursday, only on Israel News Talk Radio. All right, we're back here at the Tamar Yona Show on IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com, and our guest is Dr. Devra Davis. And we're talking about 5G, the coronavirus. And in this last segment, doctor, I'd like to ask you about 5G. What exactly is it? I mean, uh, why do we need it? I understand that it has to do with if we ever want to have driverless cars, we have to have these very short waves that can uh, uh, supply information at a nanosecond so the cars know how to drive and we can't get that with a 3G and 4G and that's why we need 5G. So where would you like to start? Well, first of all, 5G is going to require millions in the United States of new antennas to be built some of them are installed right near your bedroom window. The important thing to understand is that for 5G to work for the next five years, it's going to have to use 3G and 4G because, for example, for voice on phones to work, they will rely on 4G for the foreseeable future. As to driverless cars, they currently do exist, right, as tests, and they are using 4G uh, plus right now. So it's not true that you have to have 5G for driverless cars. It would be true if you needed millions of them. And there are a lot of us who are seriously questioning that, including Professor Paul Benny Shai at Ariel University, who organized a very important meeting in Israel that you can find out about on our website, where we talked about the latest science about what is known about 5G and what is not known. Important to understand that many cities 
Over 500 cities in Italy and many cities in other places have passed resolutions to halt 5G until safety research has been completed. And we know that 5G resonates with pollinating insects. And we know that there has not been adequate study of 5G. There's no question about that. So a number of countries like France and Switzerland and Nigeria and India are having conversations about what needs to be done. It's important to realize that what 5G is, they're calling it small because the antennas have now been compressed, but they're really not small. They can sometimes be placed on top of streetlights or trash cans or bus stops. But that doesn't mean it's a good idea. In fact, on the contrary, because of the beam forming technology, 5G will be faster than ever and it will go a shorter distance. Because it goes a shorter distance, you'll need to have thousands more of antennas. And they look like they're going to be consuming even higher amounts of energy. So it's not going to be an energy saver. Most importantly, I think, for anyone listening from the business community, think about this. Swiss Re and Lloyds of London provide secondary insurance for for companies. They have refused to cover wireless radiation, and they recently classified 5G as off the leash. It's such a big risk, they will not cover it. So these companies are self-insuring because the wireless antennas are going to emit microwave radiation, and you're going to get increased radiation into your homes, into yourself, and it's going to have an effect on neighborhoods. So many, many governments, including the European Parliament recently, talked about 5G deployment and expressed, quote, significant concern over possible impact of health and safety. So that is what needs to be done. We need to study the impact before we start to uh, uh, unveil this program. And that has not been done adequately. And that is why Professor Paul Benny Shai and others in Israel have expressed concern about this. Alan Tall, also of Tel Aviv University, helped to host this meeting that was held in February. And again, information on this can be found on our website at ehtrust.org. Okay, so I'm going to fire off some questions to you, and I need bullet answers because we only have a few minutes left to this to the to the show. Um, cell phones, we all use them. Uh, we all need them. And I can tell you that I do believe that there is danger to it because I, for some reason, I get into physical pain when I hold my cell phone. If I put it on my knee, I, my knee will start to hurt. And I know that there's something going on there. What are the dangers of cell phones? The Israeli Health Ministry and the a group called Tenuda issued recommendations, I think, maybe eight years ago that apparently you and many others haven't seen, which is that cell phones should not be kept on the body because they are not safe when used directly next to the body. And most people do not understand that phones are tested off the body. And that is a problem. So we have to educate the public better to understand that a cell phone is a two-way microwave radio and it's not safe to keep it directly on the body. Two-way micro, microwave radio. That's what it is you're saying. That's that interesting. Okay, and so we should carry it in a iPad. purse, not in a pocket, you're saying. That's right. And men are going to have to start carrying what we call MRSAs. Aha, uh-huh, cute. Okay. All right. All right. My father has one of those. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, microwaves. Is it, is it okay to zap our food? Um, That's a question of personal preference. Most microwave ovens leak. You can find out if your oven leaks by, listen carefully, putting a phone that's turned on inside the oven. Do not turn the oven on. Close the door and try to call it. If you can call the phone that's inside the oven, then you have a leaking oven. Hmm, interesting. What a great tip. I'm going to do that. Okay, and then then how dangerous it is is if there's a leak. Well, it's, uh, everything is relative, okay? You, there are relative risks. Uh, distance is your friend. So the mm-hmm. further away you can stand from the microwave oven, the better off you are. The further away you can keep your phone, your iPad, or your uh, computers, the better off you are. Now, we at Environmental Health Trust has detailed information about how you can reduce all of these exposures by wiring your computer, your iPad, and your phone so that you do not have exposure. Or like right now, 
I'm talking to you. And of course, my phone is on airplane mode. If you need to carry your phone next to your body for any length of time, put it on airplane mode. And when you're using it, use a speakerphone or a headset. I do not recommend use of Bluetooth for any length of time, and I don't recommend it generally because, of course, then you're bringing the microwave radiation, which is much, much weaker for Bluetooth, but you're bringing it right inside the brain. I was going to ask you about that. So you're saying um, these Bluetooth earbuds and uh, in-ear headphones, not safe, according to your opinion? No. Here's the issue. Yes, they are not safe for the long term. That doesn't mean if you use it once in a while, it's a problem. But for many, many people, they will be using this for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And that is a huge problem, which has not been adequately studied and for which the governments need to step up their game to start to collect the data to understand what the exposures are. Because right now, none of us is just exposed to a phone. Most of us are exposed to a phone, a computer, a number of multiple things at the same time. In my home, these things are wired. It's not that hard to do. Look at our website for how to wire your life, and you'll find information about this at ehtrust.org. All right. And uh, also, I wanted to ask you about cell phone towers and high-tension wires. I understand that if you're looking to buy a house, don't buy a house that's near high-tension wires, the electricity, and uh, keep away from cell phone towers. You would agree, disagree? I I think generally we're going to see that the industry is starting to change the way towers are operating. And certainly there's been a there's general recognition that the World Health Organization has had for many years that high tension towers, which is a different form of electromagnetic fields, does increase the risk of childhood leukemia if you're directly under them. So, yes, people, people and schools should not be located directly under high tension wires because it's it's low electromagnetic fields which have been shown to increase the risk of cancer and other problems. But as to um, towers, we're not gonna get away with a society without towers. If you don't wanna have a tower live near you, stop using your phone. What we need is a reimagining of how the technology can work in a safer way by changing the way the radiation is emitted, by changing the operating systems of phones And I know that the Chinese are well on the way to making safer technology. And I believe that Israel has a number of people working on this as well. Hmm. Okay. And so last word on 5G. In in your opinion, you're saying that it is very fast. It could be good if we are all having driverless cars and things like that to move uh, ahead in, in that sphere. But actually, we don't really need it. We can exist on 3 and 4G. I do not think that 5G is appropriate or needed now. I'm part of a group of over 350 scientists that are recommending a moratorium on the rollout of 5G until the potential hazards for human health and the environment have been fully investigated by scientists independent from industry. We know that electromagnetic fields have been shown to be harmful for humans and the environment with long-term exposures. And therefore, we all, my scientist colleagues and I, are urging a moratorium on the expansion of 5G until we have information on safety. And there is no information on safety. None has ever been required by any government. I know the French are looking into this right now. In Belgium, they are as well. The European Union has several groups also. And I know that there are people in Israel who know enough to understand the issues and to understand how you can make things safer so that we have safer technology that does not increase electromagnetic radiation in your homes. All right. So that would mean that uh, these grassroots uh, groups of people um, have to be more active in pressing the government to uh, do new testing. That's what, that's what you're saying. Absolutely. And to require that they evaluate the environmental and the health impact. And by environmental, I mean impact on agriculture through pollinating insects, I mean impact on migrating animals um, Mm. as well. And by uh, public health, of course, we're not just talking about cancer. In fact, we're talking about damage to sperm, where Israeli scientists have done work showing effects. Unfortunately, we have to stop here because we've come to the end of the show. But you can get more information if you go to her website at Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org. 
Dr. Devra Davis, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your expertise with us and your tips and ideas and encouragement and how to live a safer and healthier life. Thank you. Tadaraba. Thank you, everyone. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to write me tomorrow at IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. Just click the orange button at the top of the IsraelNewsTalkRadio.com home page, log in as yourself or an anonymous guest, and join in on the fun. You'll meet other listeners from all over the world who listen to Israel News Talk Radio, and you can make new friends. Israel News Talk Radio's chat room. It's the closest you can get to being in the studio with us. We love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Where can you get the inside news on Israel? At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips. With scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. If you love Israel News Talk Radio, then you'll love our Facebook page. We keep you up to date on what's happening in Israel. Plus, little surprise treasures that we don't share on the radio. Go now to follow us on Facebook. Just look for the Israel News Talk Radio Facebook page. And don't forget to subscribe and follow us by clicking on the like button. We post great stuff there that you'll want to share. Israel News Talk Radio on Facebook and Israel News Radio on Twitter. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.